Hi, welcome to Verbling class once again. Today's class um, is about a news article. Um, I think that reading the news is a really good way to practice English at all levels. There are some news sources that explain things in simpler language and some that are a little bit more complex. So um, this news article that I found for today is from the Vancouver Sun, which is a Canadian newspaper. And um, the article that I chose is about the horse meat scandal in Europe. And this is something that has come up recently um, in the news. There was an issue where some food, I think lasagna, was labeled as having beef in it, but actually it had horse meat instead. And there was a question about whether the horse meat had some, chem some chemicals or some medication in it that was bad for people to eat or to ingest. And so this whole thing has gotten to be a very big deal in Europe now. And um, all kinds of foods are getting tested for their content. And it brings up a lot of bigger questions about food labeling and food safety and how to know whether our food is safe um, and how to know if labels are telling the truth. So I'm going to give you guys an article. It's a fairly lengthy article. Um, so we're going to read the article together and get some reading practice. And if we have time at the end, we can talk more about the bigger issues that this article brings up about how safe our food is and how much we can trust people to be producing the food that we're eating. because. Food is very important and we eat it every day, but we allow other people and companies to make it for us. And so the idea of letting other people create something that I then put into my body is interesting. And I think it, this article brings up a lot of questions. So um, now that our class just filled up, Hello. we will do quick introductions. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, well, we'll do some quick introductions and then we'll get into the article. Uh, looks like I know almost all of you, so that's exciting. Um, and we'll introduce ourselves just the same so that we can all make sure we know each other. Um, and I would like to hear from you um, your name, what country you are in, and your um, favorite, your favorite... Teacher. Um, <laughs> well, there's only there's only one correct answer to that. If I'm yes. not your if I'm not your favorite, then you're getting kicked out of the class. Um, <laughs> let's see. No, I never think of these before. Um, your your favorite thing to do for entertainment. So, like on a Friday night, if you want to go do something fun, um, what do you like to do? And so I'm I'm Libby. I'm American. I live in France now, and. Uh, when I want to go have fun on a Friday night, I love going to concerts. I really, really like music, and um, I really like to go to concerts. So that's something I do for fun. Um, what kind and, of music? Uh, good uh, question. Uh, I like I like a lot of music. Um, I really like electronic music. No, and, don't say this. <laughs> no, it's it's. There's really excellent electronic music in Europe. Um, some of it is awful, but some of it is very good too. What's your favorite? I want to try. I don't normally. I don't listen to electronic at all. Okay, well, I'll. Uh, let's see. I'll try to think of a good. Um, I'll try to think of a good song to show you guys, and I'll post the link uh, when I when I think of one. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, let's let's do the introductions. Um, so, um, Abdullah, can you introduce yourself first? I'm Abdullah, I'm from Egypt, and I uh, 
Mm, I'd like uh, to say uh, to stay in my home. <laughs> Good. Stay at home and relax. Yeah. That is a very nice thing to do on the weekend. All right. Thanks. Um, and Hadi is next. Yes. I, my name is Hadi, and I'm from Saudi Arabia. Actually, in, in Thursday, I, I like to stay in my home with my family. Good. Time with your family. That's great. <laughs> I miss spending time with my family. But hopefully when I go home to the U.S., I will get to spend some time with them. Yeah. Here we have a special uh, habit. Most of our time is spent with family as compared with the United States family. Yeah. American family. <laughs> yeah. The, the... I, go ahead. I, I suggest if you make uh, one session about the family between uh, the difference uh, between families in different country. Oh, that's a really good idea. Okay, hold on, I'm writing it down. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good idea because that is a very big cultural difference between countries. Um, my con my family spends a lot of time together in the U.S., but. We are not a typical American family. <laughs> I'm lucky. I have a I have a good family. Um, we we hang out a lot, but American families can be very busy and very uh, isolated and not spend enough time together. So it's yeah, it's a very interesting thing to think about. All right, thanks. Um, and next we'll go to Igor. My name is Igor. I'm from uh, Moldova, and I like to uh, go with my friends. Spend time with my friends. Good. Nice. Time with friends. Um, okay, James? I'm James. Yeah, I like to, I don't know, I do everything. Sorts of, sorts of, lots of things. Yeah. Anything. You're not, you're not picky. You just want to <laughs> have fun. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not picky. I'm, I, I just do anything that is fun. Nice. Good. Yeah, it's called fun. Fun. <laughs> nice. I like it. All right. Uh, next is Jean Marc. Yes. I'm Jean Marc. Are you understand me? Yes. Okay. I'm Jean Marc. I I'm from France. In two months, I'm go to London. I am very happy to go to London because I am here for my English. Um, um, I think last time you she says uh, uh, spaghetti is a uh, is a problem is a scandal of um, lasagne in France. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about later in the class. Okay. Um, okay. But okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get we'll get into the discussion in a little bit. Um, yeah. All right, so let's see. For now, we'll move on to um, Mina. Hey, I'm Mina. I'm from Egypt. I'm 27. Uh, I'm having fun by going to the gym, doing some workouts. Nice, good exercise. Um, do yep. you prefer to go? Do you prefer to go to the gym in the morning or in the evening? Uh, sometimes at morning. Sometimes uh, at evening. Mm-hmm. I get bored nice. easily. <laughs> I see. So you have to change up your routine so that you can do something different. Yeah, each month or couple of months, I change uh, the timing, exercise, exercise type, uh, etc. Yeah, that's good. They they say that that's what you're supposed to do. It's like it's good for your fitness if you change up your your workout. Sure, sure. It, it will develop your body when you change the routine and. Uh, Make you happier, you know. Yes. Yeah, it keeps. You don't get bored. Yeah, it keeps your body guessing, and so you get in, in better shape and <laughs> it's more fun. Cheat um, your body. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, thank you. And next uh, is Peter. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm Peter, and I'm from China, but uh, I'm, I live now in. Uh, and uh, yeah, when when I have time, for example, in weekend, uh, uh, when the weather is 
it's good uh, I, I will uh, go go outside with my girlfriend and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, go into the park but uh, you know uh, he, uh, uh, now it's uh, winter and uh, the weather in Berlin in winter is very bad so we in weekend we are always uh, stay in home uh, but sometimes my my girlfriend will ask me to uh, 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 will ask me go out of, uh, to uh, 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 shopping uh, have something to eat or have uh, or or uh, watch a film yeah. Nice. So, so, so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes your girlfriend makes you leave the house when it's bad yes, weather. yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, when the weather is good, is good. Uh, I, I'm willing to do that. But when it's raining or it's snow, uh, I, I hate to do that. <laughs> I hate doing that. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And next is Servet. Yes, uh, hello, I am Sarat, I am from Turkey. My favorite activity, mm, when is summer? There's a place uh, beside sea. I like, go, I like going there a lot. Uh, some little cafe sells ice cream, like beverages, similar Coke, this type of things. And while I like standing there and sometimes I sit beside See, I watch the sea. It's so soothing. I like, I like nature, basically. And when I don't go there, I usually, I'm every, every night, I'm, I go out. There's a, like a little path, like a running path mm -hmm. near my home. I go like jogging, some body weight exercises, this type of things. Nice, good. I like that nature. Yeah, I uh, I grew up near the ocean, but I don't live near the ocean now, and I miss it. Oh yes. <laughs> um, great, thank you. And um, Sophia is last. Yes. Hello once again. I'm uh, Sofiko from Georgia, and I like to go for entertainment to the bar or to the restaurant with live music. Especially, I like instrumental jazz and have a drink. Nice, cool. Instru yes. Instrumental jazz, cool. I like that. <laughs> my my parents uh, are really into Cuban jazz, okay. which is like a little different. And so I was, but I haven't I haven't listened to a lot of um, a lot of jazz. But I really like yeah, jazz bars are a fun place to go to because they usually have a good atmosphere. You know. Yeah, very very good. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, thank you all for sharing all of that. And uh, now we will read the news article for the day. Um, I am still unable to use the Verbling Classes chat for some unknown reason. So I need to post these links in the Google chat, which is uh, the top left-hand corner of your screen. So I just posted the link to the article there. So please open that. And um, if someone wants to repaste it into the Verbling Classes, go ahead but I can only post it in the, the Google chat. So please open this article, and we'll be using this article for reading practice. We'll also be stopping uh, in the middle to check if you guys have vocabulary questions. I think that newspaper articles are a really good way to um, use vocabulary. And so um, we'll get started now with this article. Here it is. So this article is about this, this horse meat scandal that's racing across the EU. And uh, the title underneath says, a simple case of mislabeling has exposed huge problems in regulation of food in Europe. So um, has anyone read about this issue already in the news? Yes, I just heard this news this morning. <laughs> OK, yeah, yeah. so I, I, just, I just read about it yesterday. OK. Um, yes. And Actually, so, I discussed it with the sound teacher in Furtling here three days ago. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big issue in the news now, so I thought we could read an article and have a little discussion about it. 
So um, for those of you who are not familiar with this issue, hopefully this article will give you some pretty good background. And um, so let's get started with the beginning of the article says, um, what started as a simple case here. Um, who would like to read a couple of paragraphs out loud for us? Mm, can I? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Abdullah. Uh, what started as a simple case of uh, mislabeling when Irish inspectors discovered uh, horse meat DNA in beef uh, burgers uh, a month ago is beginning to, to look like a massive cause of broad spanning the 27 nation European Union the discovery of a complex and uh, intricate network of suppliers that have been slipping the meat from unwanted horses into prepared foods meant to contain only beef is uh, raising questions about the bit of the EU to perform that most basic of governmental tasks, uh, the regulation of uh, food markets. And what has in part fed this, uh, this underground industry is a huge oversupply of horses, placing this and status symbols in the home beers of the 19 90s, but an over overly expensive luxury for cash strapped owners since the start of the recession in 2008. Okay, great, thank you. So, the beginning of this article gives us a lot of information. There's a lot of information here. Um, a month ago, this horse meat was discovered in burgers that were supposed to be made of beef. So they were supposed to be beef burgers, but inspectors discovered that indeed they were not completely beef, but there was horse in them as well. And this simple discovery ended up creating a massive case of fraud. Um, what is fraud? Lying about something. Problem. Cheating. Good, yeah, cheating, lying. So when you say something is what it's not. Um, yeah, fraud. It's when you say something is something and it's and you're lying. Um, and what they discovered was this complex and intricate network of suppliers um, who have been putting horse meat into foods that are meant to only have beef. So complex means complicated, big, and intricate means elaborate um, and very like if it's complicated if it's complex and intricate it means it's a really big network of people that are all connected in really crazy ways and they're all doing this illegal activity which is putting horse meat into stuff that's supposed to only have beef in it and then at the end of this paragraph the article explains why horse meat was being put into these products. Why are they putting horse meat into beef products? Because it is cheaper? Cheaper? <laughs> Good, because, it, because it's cheaper. So yeah. if you're producing a product and you sneak in a little bit of horse meat, your company saves a little bit of money because they're not using as much beef. Actually, and I don't think so. The horse is cheaper than the chip or cow. Or, or may, maybe the the horse meat are, are bad, uh, uh, something uh, not good. Uh, uh, Arabic breads uh, are so expensive uh, than cow. Maybe. So so yeah. yeah, horses obviously can be very expensive, but as we can see from this article, um, right now what's happening, especially in Europe is an oversupply of horses. So they have too many horses and these people don't want the horses. Um, yeah. These horses used to be pets or they used to be competitive horses. They used to serve functions for people who owned them. But now it's we're in a recession and people can't afford their horses anymore. So they get rid of them. And so 
what we've realized is there's just a lot of horses around that nobody wants. And because of that, those horses are really cheap because there's so many of them and people don't really want them. There's a lot of supply and there's not a lot of demand. And so even though sometimes horses can be expensive, in this case, horse meat is very cheap. And because of that, sometimes some of these companies, these individuals have been taking horse meat and putting it into stuff that is not supposed to have horse meat in it. Um, so this, this last sentence of this paragraph is telling us about why these horses are here. Um, it says the horses were playthings and status symbols in the boom years of the 1990s but they're now an overly expensive luxury and people can't afford them anymore. Um, so people used to use horses as a status symbol. They used to say, look, this is my horse. I'm rich. Like I, I'm luxury. Look at me. Mm -hmm. But now these people have lost a lot of money because of the recession and they have become cash strapped. What does the term cash strapped mean? Turn the horse into money. Yeah, it means you don't have money. You're strapped for cash. You don't have money. And so these cash-strapped people are having to sell their horses at pretty low prices. And that's why we have so many horses around. Um, Servat asked in the chat, is horse meat harmful? So this is, this is a question that we'll learn more about later in this article. The simple answer is no. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating horse meat in general. Um, if you eat a steak that's made of horse, you're, you're fine. That's okay. But I think there are a lot of questions about whether the horse meat is sanitary. So whether it ha contains chemicals or stuff that may have been injected into the horse that's unsafe for humans. So this particular horse meat that's involved here is potentially unsafe. So let's keep reading this article so we can learn more about what this situation is with the horses. Um, the next part of the article starts with, and it's not just Europe. Um, who would like to read next? I would. Um, okay, whoever said I would, go ahead. All right, and it's just, uh, and it's not just Europe that it is affected by the surfeit of horses. Since the United States banned in effect, uh, the slaughter of horses in the 2006. The number exported to Canada for attributors up to the end of the 2010 had increased by 184%. According to the U.S. government uh, uh, accountability office and the, to the Mexico by 660 percent. The meat from the horses slaughtered in Canada, says the report, is generally expo uh, exported to the Europe and Asia. But in Europe, the political fallout from the scandal in spreading far and wide, especially in Britain where the supermarket chains have, have had to pull frozen hamburgers spaghetti, blagon, bolon, bolognese. What is this? Uh, it's an Italian word, actually. <laughs> spaghetti bolognese Bol sauce. Bolognese. Yes. Uh, sauce and lasagna. Bolognese. Bolognese sauce and la lasagna. Yes, uh, ca uh, Casalorus. Uh, for containing undeclared horse meat, sometimes 800 percent horse. All right. Shall I, shall I start? Um. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. So, so Hello? is it is it legal is it legal to to slaughter okay. horses in the United States? It was, can can you kill not. horses in the U.S. for food? No, we cannot. No. The U.S. made it illegal in 2006. So the U.S. banned the slaughter of horses in 2006. They made it illegal. And so because of that, we now export horses to Canada. 
Mm -hmm. And Canada slaughters these horses in their abattoirs. Abattoirs are what we call the places where they, they slaughter animals or kill animals to be turned into food. Okay, So Canada has these abattoirs, so does Mexico. And these countries kill the horses and then they export the meat, they send the meat um, generally to Europe and Asia. And so these horses that were slaughtered in Canada are showing up in foods in Europe where they're not supposed to be. And these are mostly prepared foods like hamburgers, spaghetti bolognese, uh, lasagna, and it's sometimes 100% horse meat in these beef products. Um, so if, if horse meat, is, even if horse meat is safe to eat, why is it wrong to put that into those products? Uh, they are not declared. Good. It's not declared that there's horse meat in there, so it's false advertising. It's it's lying about the content of the food, and that's why we call it. That's why it's related to fraud because you're presenting a product and you're saying it's one thing, and then it's not. Um, yeah. Sorry, as, as, heard, go ahead. Sorry, I heard uh, except from horse, they put some unusual parts of bodies into like sausages, these type of things, like maybe guts, uh, bones, this type of uh, like waste of the animal, they put it into this, uh, this type of products like sausages. So even we see worse situations, if they put the normal meat of the horse <laughs> in this situation, I can accept it. But yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a bigger issue that we don't really know what's in our food, you know. And if companies put weird animal body parts in sausages, you know, we don't know. We just eat them, and so uh, it's kind of strange that that sometimes we don't know um, that we don't know what's what we're eating. Um, okay, so let's talk. Let's start to read more about what this has to do with the EU and the the European Union system. Um, so the next part of the story, uh, the next part of the article starts with, the story has been. Um, who would like to read that? Me. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Okay. Oh, the story has been a gift to the so-called Euro, Euro skeptics yes. who make up about half of British Prime Minister David Cameron's Parliamentary Conservative Party try to place it them. Cameron recently announced that he will attempt to renegotiate Britain's membership of the EU with the aim of the clawing powers back from Brussels. The amended agreement will be put to the referendum after the next election due in 2015, he promised in a recent speech. Keep. Uh, yeah, keep going a little bit. Okay. Some of his big ventures, however, <laughs> Good. are demanding a freeze on meat imports from the rest of Europe are calling and are calling the UE single market an invitation to fraud. And it's not just the conservatives who have caught the wave of British revulsion at the scale of clandestine market in horse meat. Okay, good, and, thank you. Okay. That, yeah, that's good for now. So, so this part is getting a little bit technical about British politics. It's not super important, but basically um, it's it's talking about how a lot of conservatives in England are saying, um, you know, are basically saying that they are happy that they're not part of this European Union meat trade because um, they're basically criticizing the European Union. These people in England are criticizing the European Union. Um, there are a couple of good vocabulary words in this section that I just wanted to go over. Um, one of them is placate. Does anyone know what the word placate means? Satisfy. Good, yeah. Placate means to satisfy or to make someone happy. Um, 
So maybe if a if a baby is crying, to placate the baby, you'll give it a pacifier, or you'll give it some milk or something. So you, placate means to soothe or to satisfy, to make someone feel better. Um, and let's see, what's the other one? Um, clandestine. I think you could pronounce it clandestine or clandestine. I say clandestine. Um, what does that word mean? What is it? Secret. Good. It means secret. The clandestine market in horse meat means the secret market in horse meat. These people who are secretly buying and selling horse meat and putting it into these products. So that's a good uh, advanced vocabulary word. All right. Um, let's see. I may I might skip some of this. Um, so, so I'm going to read a, a couple of these paragraphs, but we're going to uh, start getting into more detail, more towards the bottom of this article. Um, so. Anne McIntosh, who chairs Britain's all-party House of Commons Food and Rural Affairs Committee, um, said on Wednesday, the extent of the contamination in the meat supply chain is breathtaking. Her committee's report said, British consumers have been cynically and systematically duped in pursuit of profit by elements within the food industry. Um, the fallibility of the EU meat inspection system is especially troubling to many because in response to the outbreak of so-called mad cow disease, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, in the 1990s, a system was put in place which meant, in theory, every kilo of meat sold in Europe could be traced to its origin. This net is clearly full of holes, and on Thursday, public health warnings were raised about the horse meat scandal. Britain's Food Standard Agency found traces of the drug phenylbutazone, often known simply as bute, in eight dead horses, the meat from three of which may have been sold in stores in France. Okay, so um, again, a lot of good vocabulary. Um, this, all this meat is contaminated, and this person finds that to be breathtaking. What does breathtaking mean? Important. Something that fascinates you. Yeah. Yeah, it's something. It's something that takes your breath away. It's so. It's so shocking that you go. <gasps> it, it's. It's breathtaking. Um, and so, this. This woman is saying that the meat supply is, chain is very contaminated. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the next paragraph, I like the way they say this. Cynically and systematically duped. That's a really fancy way of saying tricked. That. British consumers got tricked into buying this meat from Europe that's contaminated. And so these, these British conservatives are not happy because they've been tricked or duped into buying this meat that's not very sanitary um, because it contains horse meat. And now we're realizing because it also contains this, this drug, this medicine in it, that doesn't seem appropriate for humans to be eating. Um, so before we get more into that, does anyone have any questions about stuff so far? Nope. All right, so everyone gets the general, the general gist of the article so far. Um, that's good. So cool. Um, let's read more about this, this drug that they're finding in the meat. Um, this paragraph that starts with "bute" is an anti-inflammatory. Anti um, who would like to read that? Can I? Yes, please go ahead. Bute is an anti-inflammatory medication often given to horses, and the rules apparently often ignored is that horses should not be slaughtered and their meat put in the human food chain within 180 days of them being given the drug. A gruesome aspect of this particular story for British people who usually don't eat horse meat and often abhor the practice that is common in other parts of Europe, of Europe is that these eight horses were apparently put down after being injured at the entry resources where the country's most famous horse race, the Grand National in Health. While these eight horses were process processed in British abattoirs, 
the source of much of the horse meat discovered on European supermarket shelves appears to come from two slaughterhouses in the Transylvania region of Romania, a relatively new member of the EU Europe. Okay, thank European you. Union. <laughs> um, yeah, the EU, the European Union. Good. Um, okay, so, so this is getting interesting now. Not only is there horse meat in these products, but these ho this horse meat has this medication in it, mm -hmm. and the medication is in the meat because someone injected the horse with this medication when the horse was still alive, but then the horse was killed too soon after it was given the medication. So when the horse was killed, the medication was still in its bloodstream. And that means that the medication then goes into the human food supply. We eat it. And that's bad because we don't want to be eating these chemicals that are used for treating horses. Um, an anti-inflammatory medication is something that brings down um, swelling. It brings down yeah, inflammation and immune response. And yeah. so we don't want to eat that. <laughs> we don't really want to eat that at all. But um, actually we eat it. <laughs> because, because uh, you know nowadays about chicken, all the industry and the company who are grow up the chicken, they are inject the chicken to grow up quickly. So, what's the reason? The problem is not in medication. The problem is in the nature of the meat. Um, well, no, it's, it, it actually is a problem in <laughs> what the medication is because we give, we give animals medications, that's true, um, but this particular medication is not supposed to be eaten by people. It's supposed to be out of this animal's bloodstream before the animal's killed. And so this is a concern because even animals like chickens and cows that we give antibiotics to, we have certain regulations about how those antibiotics should be given to those animals. And anti-inflammatories are something a little bit different that we don't see in our food as much and that we probably shouldn't. But anyway, so the next point is that these were race horses. These weren't horses that were raised for food. They were, they were race horses. They would run races. And, and basically these race horses were killed and put into people's food. So to me that kind of seems like something from a movie. It's kind of crazy. Like yeah. all of a sudden these, these horses, you know, get injured after a race and then they're put into the food supply. It's kind of creepy oh, that that should happen. Yeah. Um, and so that's why this article calls that particular part gruesome. Gruesome means um, like kind of scary and kind of disgusting. Um, gruesome is sort of a synonym for horrifying. Um, and so this is a particularly gruesome aspect is that these were not even horses that were raised to be food but they were race horses. And uh, it says British people do not eat horse meat and often abhor the practice. Um, what does this verb mean, abhor? Abhor. What might, what, what might you guess that it means? Disgust. Yes, okay. They find, th they find it disgusting. They reject the practice. They abhor the practice. Yes. They refuse the practice. Um, they think it's disgusting that people would eat horse meat. And so for British people to accidentally find horse meat in their food is particularly difficult because they reject the idea of eating horse meat altogether at the beginning. Um, so any other vocabulary questions in the parts that we've just read? Libby, I have one question. Uh, on the a gruesome uh, uh, aspect on this paragraph, uh, the entry race race course race course. Yeah, good race course. Entry race course. I can read it so. Yes. Yeah. Entry is just the name of it. I don't know. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. A, the entry race course. Yeah. Race course. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right, any other questions about this article so far? Yes, I have a question. Yeah, uh, does the 
horse meat and the beef test uh, the same. So if they test uh, different, uh, why people cannot find out them? Good question. Really good question. Um, I think they. I, I have eaten horse meat only once. I ate horse when I was in Switzerland, and um, it was fine. And I thought it tasted like beef, but it definitely did taste different. It's not quite the same. Um, but I think when you put it into these processed foods, like spaghetti sauce or lasagna, it's all ground up and it's full of spices and um, you know seasonings. And so I think. I think it tastes similar enough that once you put a lot of spices, you can't really tell the difference. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think I, I, I think it's it, you're right though. It's kind of crazy that some some of these things were a hundred percent horse meat, <laughs> like not even beef at all. You know, it's kind of incredible that you wouldn't be able to taste the difference, but okay. I guess not. <laughs> yeah, I am here. Any Hello. more qu any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. You, you said they found this medicine in their blood because if their blood isn't the the blood supposed to be drained. Um. Yeah. I mean. I mean, they drain blood from from dead animals, but when you have a piece of meat, that piece mm -hmm. of meat still contains blood because. There are a lot of small blood vessels that go all through the muscles and stuff, and so um, there's still, even though it's not you know like liquid blood, you know like like you think of blood, um, pieces of meat still do have blood content. In them, I guess I would say. Because is that, uh, is that how? Yeah, I know because that's why uh, the re uh, the way they kill the animal, it depends. Sometimes I think. <laughs> In Europe, they kill it with electricity. When they give electricity to animal, uh, they, the sum of the blood stays in the meat mm -hmm. when they kill it with electricity. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's that's the reason they do it. Um, that's that's cool. I think that it's not first time they they do that because. Uh, it, it seems that they have done it uh, several times. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they just uh, discovered it uh, just now because it seems like it's uh, already uh, made up business. Yeah, so that's, that's what I want to discuss for the last 15 minutes. Okay. Is, is what, like, I'm glad you brought it up because what, what does this mean for the European Union? You know, they're they have this meat inspection system and they have all their food labeling yeah. and all of a sudden someone discovers this huge scandal that proves that their meat inspection system is not very good mm -hmm. and their food labels can be can be wrong and so this is a big blow to the European Union because you know they're, they're claiming that they have everything under control when yeah. really they don't have as much control over the food supply as as they claim they, to have yeah. And so that's why this issue is so important, I think. Um, it's not like anyone's died from eating this, or it's not like this is really a significant food problem, but it's more that it helps people realize that Europe has a lot of work to do if they want to have better control over the food supply. Mm -hmm, right. Yes, uh, and e even they discovered that there are horse meat in, in, in something like beef, and I think it is uh, still much better than the situation in China. In China, you can uh, pe the people can discover anything in the food, S uh, and there are many cases that the the people uh, who eat th this kind of food and got bigger problems. Yes. So I think uh, even in, in EU, they discovered that the horse meat. But I think this is. Uh, at least from my point of view, this is not a very big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and I I heard this from also one of my one of my French students yesterday. You know, he was saying uh, there are people starving in the world. There are people who don't have food. Why do we care that there's something that's horse meat instead of beef? You know, like why is this even an important issue? And so I think. 
it's it depends on your perspective, you know. I think it's an important issue because I think it says a lot about the food system and that even systems that seem perfect are not perfect. But you make a very good point that in China there's no way you there's no way for you to find out what's in your food. You just can't. <laughs> Yeah. And that's yes. a very that's a, a whole different problem and a whole different system. Yes, I think, you're right. I, it's, it's important to have perspective. Yeah, I think the problem is you because if you find on uh, if you find things that you don't know about in foods, uh, it means you may find different things as well in that food. Yes. Horse meat so maybe it's not first, you, first, yeah, first you find horse meat, then you mm -hmm. find you know arsenic or something that you really don't want. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I think it's it's it says something about what could happen, and I think it's an important warning for the European Union that they need to they need to tighten down on their system and start to do a better job. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, but in France people don't eat horses. You don't like horses. Yeah, uh, I've I've noticed that in France, here in France, people don't eat horse meat either. Yes, um. because uh, somebody like horses, or not, other people not not don't eat horses. Yeah, have have any of have any of you have any of you in the class ever eaten horse meat before? Yes. Never. No. No. Cool. Never. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> but I suppose maybe I am eating it without knowing that I'm. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Um, in Italy, knows? in southern Italy, it is a normal thing eating horse meat. It's interesting that in some parts of Europe it's very common, and in some parts it's not. Um, yes. Because yeah, in Sw in Switzerland, which is right next to France, uh, eating horse meat was very common. But in France, people don't do it. So. Yes, and the horse meat it's um, more expensive than beef meat. Interesting. Okay, so so in Italy, the horse meat is more expensive, because this article was was telling us why horse meat is less expensive, but I think it was partially because the horse meat that's being put into these foods is not yeah. very good quality. It's probably not supposed yeah. to be eaten by anyone. The question. <laughs> the question is not. It is not that um, there are there is uh, horse meat. I think that the question is that there was horse meat there um, because in Italy we um, raise up horse for eating and uh, yeah, raise up yeah, exactly. horse for running or uh, for pets. But the difference is um, that if you want to raise up horse for for um, eating, you don't have to give um, to give medicine. Etc. Et and I think that in that case, they rose up, uh, rose up horse for riding, and so they give them medicine. But then they uh, give this horse for the meat, and that is the question. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's not that it's horse; it's that it's an animal that wasn't supposed to be food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I agree. I think that's that's the the biggest issue. Um, all right, so I want to hear more of your thoughts on this. You know, we see a lot of these scandals where food is contaminated and things are in food that are not supposed to be. Um, I mean, how, how do we fix this? Like, is it is it that big of a problem? You know, how, how should the system improve? What do you guys think? Actually, it's a very big problem because instead of the gold and the other good metals, uh, that they are very expensive. Uh, in fact, expensive is food nowadays because the world has a lack of food and to keep uh, people, uh, to give them food, they need to, uh, <laughs> to, to make different mixes of the, I don't know, to use the um, unallowed, or how I can say, don't allow the um, uh, materials or um, uh, uh, things in it for for satisfy so yes and everywhere and it causes uh, many uh, diseases and health problems so 
government everywhere is like these stupid, uh, stupid persons because they are putting in healthcare so many millions of dollars and for f food they are making such a fake and fraud things that it causes many diseases and many health problems. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a stupid thing and uh, everyone and world needs to realize everything, how it uh, runs and completely change everything. Yeah, I think that's a really, that's a really good point and it was very well said um, that, that governments put money into health care, but there's a lot more to health than health care and food is very related to health, you know. And, and people people need, I mean, we need food to survive, and we eat it every day. And so it sounds like, in your opinion, governments need to put a lot more emphasis on the safety and the quality and the price of the food supply sure. instead of focusing so much on other issues that are less important. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, who else would like to share what they think? You know, in the history... People would do everything, like everything was handmade, handmade things. Yeah. Then, then we started to produce things at factories. People considered using this thing like being at high class people. Now we are slowly, we are learning the deficits of the this system. And people again start start starting to turn back and like more natural products people are now don't believe me for example my home we have like a bread machine mm -hmm. we can do handmade because you know uh, especially in turkey when they uh, they get rid of the uh, vitamin part of the wheat and oh yeah 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 so it's unhealthy. So now people are, I think, uh, are trying to turn back to the back because this system is not working well. Yes. Yeah, also really, really well explained. Uh, I definitely agree. I think at the beginning everything was homemade. We made our own food and it was much more home focused. And then we all got very excited about industrial food production mm -hmm. because it was cool that companies could produce lots of food and you know and now it's very convenient to go to the grocery store and buy whatever we want but a consequence of that is that food is less healthy it's less natural and we're starting to not know what's in our food and I agree that the the organic movement and these other food movements that are yeah. back towards local and um, smaller production it's kickback it's it's pushback from this society where these huge companies make our food now. For example, my uh, uncle moved to another city, like near, he bought a home, uh, he has a garden now, he produces, he grows his own vegetables because of this thing, you know, like, like you said, organic things. You know, normally, yeah. you, you buy, I don't know what I bought, sometimes you buy a vegetable, it tastes something different. They are changing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I, I think the 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 organic food the the biggest problem about organic food is it uh, is so expensive. Yeah. That uh, uh, few people can afford uh, can afford it. Uh, especially for the the poor people, they they, they have no choice. But they they, they can only uh, by the the ordinary the the, the, the ordinary food can they, they can't of, afford the, the organic food even they are they are good the the quality of this organic food are, are good they can't afford it yeah yeah price is a huge problem and I I think these issues are so interesting this is one of my favorite things to study is food systems and uh, and I think it's I think it's going to take some major change because it makes no sense that junk food costs less than healthy food and vegetables cost more than chips and organic costs more than industrially produced and I think I think 
we're going to have to see some really big changes. Um, like, like Sofiko said, worldwide. I think it, the system's going to need to change because the way we're producing our food lets us produce a lot of it, but the quality is low and it's not very sustainable and sometimes not very safe. And I think we're going to have to do a lot of reconsidering of the way that we eat and the way we produce our food. Yeah, but that's I, don't my think, yeah I don't think it's uh, more expensive to have organic foods. For example, you know chips, they sell chips maybe 100 grams, like $1. And at that price, you can buy one kilo of potato, and you can cook it by yourself. You can make it like a more healthy food. Yeah, yes. I think it is a good point. We should um, remember how to how to cook food. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely, definitely true. Because even when price is not an issue, like like with the potato example, maybe. Mm -hmm people just don't want to eat the potatoes. They'd rather buy the chips and eat them now and you know and they don't want to cook and they don't want to take the time. Yes. Here in Italy a lot of people loves to cook. So um, there is not um, um, a, great, a great problem here in Italy. For example no one loves to to eat stir fry lasagne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why it don't happen. This don't happen in Italy, but in other kingdom because mm, not a lot of people know how to cook lasagna. Yeah. And that's why we have to remember how to prepare our foods. Yeah, I love that you make this point because uh, I read at one point I read a book about how much people spend on food throughout the world. And in the U.S., I think we only spend like 10% of our income on food. And the country in, in the entire world that spends the most percentage of their income on food is Italy. <laughs> Italy, Italy, uh, Italian people are more willing to pay for good quality food products, and they're willing to spend a little bit more to have good quality than any other country in the world. So I think that's a pretty cool thing about Italy. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> I think so. Um, all right, so that's all that we're going to have time for today. Um, I really liked this discussion. I thought it was really interesting. And um, let me know on my Facebook page, as always, if you have any questions. Um, it's facebook.com slash Libby Verbling. And uh, you can give me suggestions for class content or anything you want. Keep in touch with me. And I really hope to see you all again soon. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, evening, and yeah. uh, I'll see you later. Thank you, Libby. And Thank don't you. forget to uh, write this song name on Facebook. Yeah. Um, sorry, what, what did you say, Servant? Electronics song. You said I will type oh, it on yes. Facebook. Uh, don't okay, forget. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't forget. I'll write that down, too. I will I will post one for you. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I trust your uh, music taste. I have to try <laughs> it. If you like it, I am sure it's perfect. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Well, you'll have to let me know what you think. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. See you later. Bye, bye. bye. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. You too. Uh